All right, guys, I'm getting closer on this door. Still 90% done, 90% to go. <laughs> it's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Okay, these are the parts we need to make for my door pins on Scrappy. My not so scrappy parts of Scrappy. <laughs> this is my scratchy parts of Scrappy. Scratch build. <laughs> Okay, guys, you can see my shop's a mess. <laughs> it's a clear sh statement that Ron's <laughs> Lake Pal. <laughs> so I'm just working on my own right now. We just finished machining up these little parts right here. I'll show you them close up. This one's out of aluminum. This one's out of stainless steel. But uh, you can see the way these work. This is my door pin assembly that will, this large diameter passes through a carbon tube and then this pin slides in and pins the door, and there'll be two pinning at the same time. So I've got my over center pivot system, they'll move it in and out. But since my door is shorter than like a carbon cup door, I'm using a similar system, their center pivot system from a cup crafter's door, I really like it. But my, their doors are long, where my door is shorter, they were able to take a bar, and, and because it's such a long distance, the angle didn't change much as the center pivot moved and the bar was able to, to flex and then they gave it a little extra play in the door so that there didn't need to be an additional pivot. I can't do that on Scrappy because the door's shorter and the angle and the geometry would change so much that the pin would want to change directions and it would bind up all the time. And also I wanted a really tight tolerance so when the door closes it wouldn't rattle. So I made a, a exact machine fit for the carbon fiber pass-through tube, where this is a, literally no play, but slides easy. This is the tube that passes through my door. That is made to fit. And then since the geometry would cause a bind if it were a single long bar, I made this little part out of stainless steel. This pairs up inside this one. The reason I made it stainless is because of how small everything needs to be. This is a single location rather than a twin and this was able to be thick. I needed the strength of the stainless. So that's why I used two different metals. But that pairs together and as this pivot on this side rotates back and forth to open and close the door, this pin can move in and out and this fulcrum will move with the rotating handle and allow this not to bind and me to keep this pin a, a very little tolerance, um, no vibration pin. So this is a bigger spring I picked up. This spring slides on here. I made a stop for it. This spring will interact and go in and out as I twist the handle. What that will do is create constant tension on the handle. So as you rotate it, once you get over center, it will spring lock and the springs will hold the pins in and vibration in flight will not be able to un or vibrate or spin the handle out because there's springs locking it in. On the other side of the fulcrum, the geometry set up so that same spring will rotate over and then spring lock and hold the pins when you open the door out of the way and vibration or wind shaking the door as the door's up the pin won't be able to work its way out and have you close the door and then drag your pin across the airplane. So this spring is a dual acting um, tension to keep it from going either direction, open or closed once you get over center. So it's a pretty simple system, a um, little more complex than maybe a lot of bush planes have. Uh, Cub crafters did a good job, so I wanted to take theirs and kind of tweak it a bit and make it work for Scrappy. That's what I've done. Let's go install it. All right, guys, I'm getting closer on this door. Still 90% done, 90% to go. <laughs> are we there yet? No, we are not. Are we there yet? No. no. All right, so I just made these up. Right here, I've got the over center pivot in. Um, I've still got a machine a bunch of ends for here. But right here, 
There's always a little play. It's built really lightweight, plenty strong, but I don't like when I grab a handle for it to feel very loose, so I decided to really beef this up. This super simple, lightweight part, uh, I machined up to go on both sides of this, and it's a press fit. I'll, I still gotta put in a little washer, a little Teflon washer in here, an inch and a half diameter, but then I'll press these together till they touch both sides, the full inch and a half engagement to this heavy, thick carbon fiber structure so that when I later put a handle on the outside of the window here, um, this washer will be up against a hard surface and that handle won't wiggle around and move. So it's a little simple add. And then I made this pin, will pass through here, go through both sides, the internal mechanisms, dowel set, uh, a compression pin right up at the face and then there's a secondary compression pin that will hold the handle a much bigger one out here on the edge so I'm gonna get these ready and prepped get my pin set let's get them installed back to work That uh, feels great. I still got to make the ends for on here and here, but I'll tell you what, that is a snug, smooth fit. And there is absolutely no play in that handle. So that should work good. I've got the other hole drilled. You can see right here, the dowel pin, the solid aluminum bar I pushed through. You can barely see it there. I actually had to use a vise to press it through and uh, it would have never came off anyway, but we've got the compression uh, pin in it and roll pin in. We're ready to get back to work. Kind of get some glass on this, finish and trim. Okay guys, I've got this in just temporary. I've got the tape just holding the sleeve onto the aluminum tube and the pivot joint. Uh, but that's just so I can kind of test it out and see how it all works. You can see how well that goes. Right there is the transition to over center. But um, I've got to make a couple more adjustments. I'm leaving it just like this with tape while I build the rest of the subframe around this. I can use this to open and close the door, work on it. When I've got everything done, I'm gonna make some adjustment on the lengths, insert the springs, and then assemble it for the last time, and then I'll pin set uh, all the joints be, that I've got taped together right now. So, so far so good. Really happy about it. I need to build this uh, return on it, a face and put it in the window and a bunch of stuff. So I got a lot to do. Let's get to work. Getting closer.
We've got a little finish work to do, but so far so good. What's really amazing is how sturdy this is. I mean, there's flex, but very little. <laughs> Carbon fiber is awesome. These get springs on it. I'll put them on later, but you can see the holes in here go into the main steel subframe. I, I welded in a receiving plate out of chromoly so that it doesn't just go into the carbon trim. That pins there. And this one pins there. And that is, <laughs> as always, my back door is banging. There we go, I'll hold the back door shut. <laughs> that is a solid door frame. So this will operate those pins. These pins get springs. Pull this out. Let's put it together. All right guys, I'm just about to put in the springs, do the final test. I've got these rivet sets on the control of my door, but I wanna do a quick shout out to some friends in Alaska the Tau Keaton of Fly-In, they gave me this shirt. I think it's awesome, past, present, and future aircraft in aviation, thank you guys. Let's go ahead and get this installed. I can't wait to see you guys. Love everyone up there in Alaska. All right, here we go. This pin goes in here. The spring counter sets into a little hole. And then I spring load this. This will be a bolt. That's a little snug, there we go. It worked. <laughs> I need to make some handles, so we'll draw those up next and get them installed. Boy, I'm happy. Let's get back to work. All right, guys, I'm finally putting the door together. So instead of using rivets, I've got my little pin ready to go. This should slide right here. Like a glove. Pop this one out. No longer use that, it was temporary. All right, let's put some cotter pins in and this will be done. All right, guys, I'm beat. <laughs> it's been a long day. I lost Ron um, late uh, in the evening. I knew if I just stayed like six or seven more hours, I could wrap this up. So I don't even know what time it is. 3.28 a.m. Both, I wanted to get both these windows done and I, if I, knew, I knew if I just put in six or seven more hours, I could wrap them up. They're all done. I need to machine my handles on the door steel. Um, but I'm really happy with how it's turned out. You can see how tight that sucks in the door as I close it. So tight, and since I mold it right to the plane, you can see there's literally not room to put that sharp edge into the door. So it, as it closes and the pins go in, they suck the door tight, so there's no rattle at all. Now what I've got to do to protect the paint, if you open this up, you can see this has got a step groove in it. That chases around this groove right here. I don't want this carbon fiber or this paint to get rub marks. So I've got a clear bra that I'll put over top of this carbon fiber like I did on my gear legs. It's an automotive clear. It's kind of like a self-healing clear bra. So if you kind of scratch it lightly, it uh, mends itself so you don't see it. But what I've got to do is put the clear bra here so this mates against it. Now, you want a really tight fit, 
but in all aircraft, things move and flex a little. And so what you want is you want it tight here, but you don't want it tight against this part of the frame. So this square tubing you see right here actually sits 3 16 of an inch away from the frame because I don't want this tube to grind across the carbon fiber, carbon to carbon. And then if there was any flex or movement, I don't want the door to bind going in and out. So there's a, a 3 16 clearance all the way around the frame. But on this side, I don't want the air coming in so it can pinch tight. And even if there was a little movement, it doesn't bind the door at all. The other reason for the 3 16 inch clearance is you can tell I put a little radius on here and a radius on here. And I've got a quarter by quarter with a hollow center rubber compression seal that will go on the door. I don't want to put it on here, you just rip it off, but you put it on the door frame here. And as this door closes, that rubber seal goes in between here and here, and it squishes 1 16th of an inch. And then that causes the door to be completely airtight. A lot of times you'll see seals placed on the outside. The only downside with that is um, the seal is always pushing the door open and holding a gap against the airframe. And that's where the air gets in and starts to open it up. And so you want the seal to get pinched between here and here, and then the door can still hold tight. The air doesn't come in and the seal is backside. So I still got to put the seal in. I've got to clean this up a little bit, but I'm really close and doing it the right way. I need to go to bed, <laughs> but I don't want to. I want to play with this. Poe didn't want to go to sleep. <laughs> anyway, I got some cleanup to do, some seals, but for all intents and purposes, my door's done. I couldn't be happier, so I need some sleep. <laughs> I'll go home, get whatever my body tells me it needs, and then get right back here and get back to work. We'll see you soon.